Cowboy Nation, man, we might have ourselves a situation brewing in this tight end room, man. We, this might just be the end of the road for Mr. Peyton Hendershot, man. It might be over with for him. It might be a lot of slow singing and flower bringing. Because when we think about it, man, this tight end room is deep. We got an overcrowded tight end room, and we might have to have him on the chopping block or somebody got to go because we're not taking that many tight ends on the 53-man roster. So in this video, we are going to break down each tight end, their strengths, their weaknesses, and see who can help the Cowboys the most or the best, who has the most solidified role on this team, and who will be chopped off Game of Thrones style head rolling type vibes who would not make the final 53 man roster okay first we'll talk about the person in question mr peyton hendershot undrafted free agent coming out of indiana standing at 6'4 250 pounds he's only 25 years old so he's still very young still got potential and he runs a 4'8 man he's pretty athletic for a tight end so he definitely has a lot of upside and potential but you understand that when he was with Kelly Moore, he had a role. He was one of the three horsemen. We started mixing his name with Ferguson, Fergushot, and all of this stuff. The four horsemen with four tight end packages that Kelly Moore ran. But after Kelly Moore, his usage went down dramatically. He pretty much was a non-factor last year. Last year in 2022 under Kelly Moore in 16 games, he had 16 targets, 103 yards with two touchdowns. So it's not like he had a whole lot of production. He did a whole lot of great things, but he drastically went down in the Mike McCarthy scheme. So he played half the number of games. He only played eight games under Mike McCarthy and only had four receptions and 38 yards. So he could be a victim of just simply not having a sponsor in the building no more. So that's what it seems like he's a victim of. And hey, that's just how the cards fall sometimes. Sometimes that's just the hand you dealt. So hey, now he find himself in a super loaded, crowded tight end room. So not only did Mike McCarthy not vouch for him or sponsor him, he went and drafted Luke Schoolmaker last year out of Michigan in the second round. But when it comes to Peyton Hendershot, we understand that he's more of a pass catching tight end. You know, one of those guys you put in the trio formation, one of those guys that you don't put in the in line or the wide position. He's not really a big blocker, so to speak. He's not that kind of guy. I would like him more in like the trio situation, like I said, splitting them out like a big slot, stuff like that. Him and Dak are great in the same route. So when it comes to inline tight end stuff, though, you know Peyton Hendershot is not the biggest blocker. He's not blowing up people. He's not going to open up too many run lines for the running back and stuff like that. But to me, I like I said, I like his role. I like the way Kelly Moore used him. And he was pretty effective when he got his opportunities, but we just don't play football that way anymore. We threw off all the irresponsible, you know, stupid face palm type plays that Kellen Moore used to do. So his role just drastically diminished in big Mike offense. Which brings us to the Mike McCarthy prototype, the person that he actually selected with Peyton Hendershot on the team with a number one tight end and Jake Ferguson. He still used the second round pick for Mr. Luke Schoolmaker. So now we look at Schoolmaker, he's definitely more of a wide in line type tight end. He's a blocker type tight end. And he's just like a fraction bigger than Peyton Hendershot. He's 6'5 and 251 pounds. So that one pound might make a world of difference when you're talking about archetypes for tight ends and what their responsibilities are. We already know Schoolmaker coming out of Michigan, he was definitely a, a blocking tight end. They used to actually run the ball behind Schoolmaker, so he was like a heat-seeking missile when it came to opening up run lanes and stuff for Blake Corum and all the other running backs. So when it comes to Schoolmaker, we already know he's up in age. He's already 25. He's older than Peyton Hendershot, surprisingly. So, you know, he's a little more mature, and he's definitely more of the type of guy that Big Mike's looking for. He's the inline wide type tight end for sure and he's not that 
big of a pass catcher right now. We didn't really see that big of a side of him, but he do have some upside. We just didn't get to see it too much in 2023. But when it come to loose school maker, he ran a 4.6, a little faster than what Peyton Hendershot ran a 4.8. It's, re it's really surprising to me. It's like, it's blowing my mind that Luke is actually older than Peyton Hendershot by six months. Like, yes, he's older than Peyton Hendershot by six months. That's just mind blowing. Peyton Hendershot been on this team, what, three years? And he just a rookie. And it's his second year, and he's already older. but. That's neither here nor there. But we understand that he's a Mike McCarthy type, prototype, archetype type of player, and he's gonna have priority. You know, that was Big Mike pick. That's the idea that he had when he thought about a tight end. So we'll have priority or, you know, privilege over paying him the shot more than likely. And the mere fact that he's coming off an injury. That's not helping his case that much, Luke Schoonmaker, but we already know as soon as he's healthy, he will get, you know, pedestalized over Peyton Hendershot. That's just the nature of the beast. Peyton Hendershot is an undrafted um, player that came out of Indiana, and Luke is a second round pick. Like, who you think gonna win that tug of war battle in the front office? We already know who gonna win that. And now the next candidate that's up to bat is Brevin Span Ford. Tight end coming out of Minnesota. He's a huge kid standing at 6'7", 260 pounds. So he trumps both of those guys in size. He's a little slower than Luke Schoonmaker at 4'7", but it's crazy that he ran it faster than Peyton Hendershot at that size. So that lets you know that he's an athletic wonder. He's a big time athlete at that size for a tight end. So he's gonna be an interesting prospect to look at going forward. And I'm sure Mike McCarthy is liking what they see from him. We've been hearing a lot of buzz about him from the mini camp and OTAs. But in Minnesota, in college, he didn't get a whole lot of targets, a whole lot of usage. He only had, in 2022, he had 21% of the target share. So that's not a whole lot. In 2023, he only had 15, so it went down drastically. And that tells you a lot. They was not utilizing their tight ends that much, so he got a lot of untapped potential. In 2022, he had 42 targets, 497 yards receiving, and he only had two touchdown catches. So, like I said, they was not utilizing the tight end that much in Minnesota. And in 2023, his uses went down. Like I said earlier, he only had 25 catches for 239 yards and two touchdowns again. So he just didn't blow your mind with the production he had. So he's pretty much a prospect we're looking at far as potential and projecting where he could be if you throw him in the mix with Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy in this scheme, alongside of Jake Ferguson, we'll see what he could be or what he could do. So he's an exciting candidate to come try to knock Peyton Hendershot off of his pedestal that he on right now for the Cowboys. So he's an interesting one. Keep your eye on Brevin Spanford. Now we can discuss the next person up to bat, the next candidate, Mr. John Steven Jr. He was the guy who just wow everybody in training camp last year everybody was talking about him he was the topic of discussion and then unfortunately he ended up getting hurt but you know we seen a lot of promise from him he was catching passes left and right from Dak Prescott it was a, almost a sure thing it was almost a lot that he was gonna make this team actually I believe that was Steven or Jerry one of them said that he was going to make the team so that was pretty much telling you a lot what they thought about Peyton Hendershot last year. So it seems like he would have been the odd man out if John Stevens Jr. would have been healthy. But when it comes to John Stevens Jr., man, he's a very athletic guy standing at 6'5 and 221 pounds coming out of the University of Louisiana. So he was another undrafted guy, but he came in and left his mark, went crazy, made some noise, and earned his respect and basically had earned him a spot on the team. So we'll have to see how it play out this time. But when it comes to his skill set, man, he's an athletic guy. He's a former wide receiver. He's somebody that can go stretch the field, be a pass catcher for you. I don't think he's much of a wide inline type tight end that Mike McCarthy prefer, but he's a pass catching freak, basically a wide receiver 
2.0 with a big frame on them catching the ball from a tight end spot so i'm pretty sure that would be a great dynamic to have with a pure true tight end and jake ferguson on one side john stephen jr just an athletic guy that could do it all on the other side i'm sure that'll bode well for this offense of dak prescott i'm sure we can make some magic with that combination right there but that's three of the guys man that could demand more of a attention when it comes to trying to decide where this roster gonna go at tight end coming into 2024 and then you got some honorable mentions like princeton fan when it comes to princeton fan he actually got some glowing reviews for from a few people out there in otas and in many camps so hey he's making a name for himself he's trying to put his name in that hat as well so you know last year in conclusion we only took in four tight ends so it's only four spots to be had and right now it's looking like Luke Schoonmaker, Jake Ferguson, Brevin Spanford, and John Stevens Jr. I just can't see no way he can make a case for himself to be over those guys. No way, shape, form, or fashion. But hey, it is going to be an open competition. Let's see what happens in training camp. Can't wait to see what happens and what the outcome. Really think this is the end of the road unless the Cowboys pull a nefarious move like we like to do and make somebody leg hurt or they ankle hurt and put them on IR, do some fancy, you know, manipulation to the roster or bend the rules or something to keep somebody. But let me know in the comments what you think about the tight end position. Remember, we only kept four in 2023, so only four of these tight ends can stay. And let me know if you think my prediction is right. Peyton Hendershot won't be here in 2024. Or do you think it's somebody else, a shocking cut that could happen in trying to count or something like that? Let us know in the comments how you feel or what your predictions is. But that's all I got for you today, man. Just holla at your boy, Landlord from Alabama, with the same handle on all social media. And like I say, 1K, 1 love, Cowboys Nation. Let's go.